Hi folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. What we're doing today is one of Jason's jobs. Um, what we're doing is this uh, finish here. This is pretty much like a, what I call an adobe finish with waves in it, indentations. Um, we're going to show you guys how we do this. First thing is, we're going to apply this brown coat on it. And a brown coat just simply means the second coat. It is not the color brown. Uh, that's, that's a misconception. People always say to me on when they're answering or asking me questions online, why do they call it a brown coat if it's gray? I don't know the answer to that. But it's, it's the second coat. So we're applying the second coat. And when we get this on here, I'll show you how what we do, we will float this coat, and floating just means we're going to bring out the aggregate. You see this aggregate here, it's very heavy. It's what we call a heavy float finish. After we bring out the aggregate with the green sponge float, we're going to put some lines in it. Then we're going to allow that to set and put more, or we're, then we're going to float that to give the the line's the exact same finish as theirs because this whole house was done with a two coat system. They did exactly what we're doing, but the difference was on this, after it was up for a number of years, they applied a text coat to it. And what is a text coat? A text coat is simply sand, or I'm sorry, perlite, color, and paint. Usually it's an acrylic paint to waterproof. Okay, not in the sun. And that is why, that's why this finish here is floated or it looks like the aggregate is brought out because they came back and they text coated it. So once we have this finish on and we're at the correct depth, which oh, we're getting there. Generally what I'll do is I'll rod a wall, but there's no need rod in this wall because it's pretty humpty. So, let's see, I got, well, I'm out of mud until Jay mixes me more. But the idea is on this particular finish, you look at that finish. It's uh, a lot of patchwork around the house and some of it's done well, some of it's done not so well. Our job is to do it as best as we can per wall. So I'll look at this right here. They use a square chop after they've gotten both coats on it. What they've done is they just put some marks in it here, every which way, and they're not—they're uh, not stationary. They're just random. So we'll do that. We're going to do that, and then what I can do once this all sets is take my sponge float and float it. Or can you come down here, Jay, for a sec? Here's a wall that that Jay did. He spread it out. He floated it. <coughs> then he put his random marks in it. So after you put your random marks in it, say for down here, for example, okay, everything is floated. That means it looks like heavy sandpaper or he brought the aggregate out. Then after you put your lines in it, you allow it to set about just the right amount of time and then you come and you float those. See, you float those, turn your float around and all you're doing is you're bringing the aggregate out of the trial finish like so. It's not that difficult if you know how to do it. And we are fortunate enough to know how to do it. We've got a lot of time in. Again, you just float over the areas that we have already placed our indention, inden indentions on. Indentations, that's that word. All right. We're doing a lot of things here, guys. We are multitasking. We have several other patches every which way. So. Uh, excuse my stuttering. Anyhow, uh, we're going to mix up some more mud. I'm going to finish that because I'm jumping all over the place to prove a point here. Uh, in about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll go back and we'll show you how we do this big section once that mud is mixed and it's fully applied the base coat. Okay, guys, we're at a stage here where I decided to just start from scratch so I can show you guys a little bit more of what I'm referring to with this indented adobe finish. What I'm doing right now is I'm floating the wall. And that just means 
you take a green sponge float like so, and you put it in the water, pound it out a little bit, flip it, put it back in, pound it out a little bit, and you'll see sometimes myself even, where I'll come like this and tap it like this. If you tap it like this hard, guys, you bend the crap out of this float so it's no longer effective. So what I generally do is I use the curve of the bucket and tap all the water out. Why do we want all the water out or a lot of the water out? Because if I use just a little bit of water, now I'm not bringing out too much grain. If I use a lot of the water, say like, okay, I'm going to leave a lot of water in here. Look at all that grain I'm bringing out. We don't want that. So we tap it all out. And by the way, guys, when we are done, we're going to pull this tape. Is there going to be a little bit of residue on that window? Absolutely. And that's okay. What we do is we take our float, we clean it, keep it clean until the end of the job, then we just take a towel and wipe it off. Anyhow, where I went ahead and proved a point, now what I'm going to do is take all of the water off of this and I'm going to fix my own little explanation. Here, that's a lot drier. Another thing too, guys, is, all right, say, say we're about where we want to be here with our sand. And you can do two things. If it's way too gritty, you can hit it with your trowel again and get rid of some of the grit. Or you could allow it to set, say, for oh, 15, 20 more minutes and then take a drier sponge float and just hit it very lightly. Just barely hit it, guys. For the sake of what we're doing, I'm fine with, with what I have here because I know how to improvise. So what I'm going to do now is, again, like what I showed you a second ago, you look at those finishes there. I'm going to use the heel of my trowel. It's straighter than the toe. Toe, heel. Flip it around. I'm going to look at those indentations there. And depending on, depending on what they've got on this particular wall, they've got a little bit of half rounds, little wigglies here and there. What we'll do is we just match it, guys. We just look up and, and sort of match it. Some of them touch each other like so, and some of them don't. And I'm using the heel because I can put more pressure. And I can go deep if I want, or I can go light. They're kind of medium with what they have. I even put a couple in here, and we go back over here, and we look at that. We kind of follow the pattern, too. Here there's a pattern. It's going right into there. Here there's a pattern. We, we follow the patterns of what they originally had. And, of course, I can see them because I'm right here. Random, guys. Random. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this set about, oh, 10, 15 minutes. And while this is setting for 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to have a snack. And then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to come back and I'm going to, after this sets, I'm going to take each one of these and just lightly, lightly go over it. So we still have the indentations. We float them, giving them the grit in the indentation caused by somebody spraying a dash or a, a text coat in it. And we're going to take out a little bit of the sharpness so it's a little smoother like that. Ten coats of paint too, guys. A lot of little things when doing this. You consider everything. Paint, text coat, and try to blend it all in in one shot. All right, guys. We are getting close now. Now what I'm doing is I've let it set about 15 minutes. I got the majority of these little guys. And what I'm using is the edge of the float, just the edge. And what, I'm, what I like to do is, is soften these up a little bit. We just soften them up. See there? Soften them up. Hit it right in the corner. And with the edge here, because it's been painted so many times, soften it. Match that, what they have. Soften it up a little bit. I'll show you the last thing before I pull the tape off of this window, guys. And Jay, Jay did the other window over there. We were going to show you uh, his work compared to my work. And it dawned on me, like I used to say, Union, 30 years ago, 25 years ago. Guys, I said, Kirk, I'm a way better plasterer than you. And I'd say, man, I sure hope so, because if you're not, that means I got to do all the work. So anytime I work with anybody, I'm hoping they're way better than me. And I, I love working with guys that are way better than me. Uh, there's no glory in being the best. If you're way better, guys, and you're working with me, that just makes my day. Anyhow, so I'll show you one last little piece here. We get all these little areas that aren't floated. 
like so. Casey, hey. how's it going, buddy? I was just explaining your project. You're catching me at the tail end of explanation. Dirty float, guys. I dropped that dirty float in the dirty bucket. Now I'm going to take a clean bucket. Clean bucket. I'm going to pull off all of this tape here. And yes, we're going to have some residue. Absolutely. No such thing as no residue. We pull this guy off. Oh, come on off. Come on off. Get that stuff off. Oh, come on now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now what we do is with the clean bucket of water, we can trim it out. Say, if some gets here, we just go like so, get it off. If any of you guys think you're going to cover so well that you're not going to get any tape or stucco on that frame, you're mistaken. Doesn't work that way. You always get some. But that's what the clean bucket of water is for. And if you get any in these tracks, which are kind of weird, you just take a piece of wood. Works the best. I'm going to use my trowel right now just to prove a point and get it out of there. And then you clean it up like so. In any other mess, you just take a clean towel and get it off there. You're just in time, brother. Anyhow, this is Jason's work right here. KC, the homeowner. Artist, man. Totally artist. Uh, Trust me. Oh, he come just in time for, to hear that. Awesome. Anyway, my name is Kirk. Jason on the camera, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, we were getting out of here, but Casey has all these little helicopters all over the place, and I thought, whoa, those are so cool. He's going to demonstrate how to use this thing. My first time, so. The first time. <laughs> I never. I only see this in Star Wars. And Jay was explaining to me one time how somebody was using it during a wedding and it came down and went in some somebody's face and I thought oh what a good wedding present so 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 when you come down just try not to hit me that thing looks awesome <laughs> see we're normally nothing but stucco but we have a little treat for you if anybody's but ever now you're gonna need to get some uh, aerial footage of your stucco but can you grab it can you grab it Casey. Anyhow, guys, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.